we truly bless him and we thank you again for spending your morning with us. We know you didn't have to do that, but we're grateful that you did. Praise the Lord. And so we want to talk about this morning, as I mentioned and told you earlier, I'll always be talking about this season, spiritual things of the Lord, because it's a season of closeness with God. And so therefore we want to walk in this. I thank God for the message on Thursday about the day, the day is not promised to us, but we are not to worry for tomorrow's worries is its own, and today has enough trouble. You hear me say that, but it was good to hear another minister repeat the same thing, because it is the word. But I want to talk to you this morning about your spiritual gifts, and the key is spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom is a powerful thing, and that confounds the prudent and the wise. And we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to take off in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to take off at verse 4. But I want us to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this morning for our healing. We thank you this morning, Lord God, that we don't have all the answers, but you do. We thank you, Lord God, that you make us whole in what we do. And I thank you, Lord God, that you lead us with these spiritual gifts that we have, and we sometimes forget we have them, but Lord God, then we thank you for this spiritual wisdom. Wisdom, as you know, is her sister. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are to what? Exalt her according to the word of God. And in all our getting, we are to get wisdom and get understanding. So we just want discernment as well as our spiritual wisdom. Praise the Lord. I seek counsel because I want God to, to talk to me and lead me. He said, seek ye kingdom first, and all these things will be added unto thee. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Paul and his walk in the Corinthians. I love Paul. He had a lot of writings, didn't he? Some people call it the Paul line epistles. But we're going to talk about Corinthians today and how he walked that out. So again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, take off at verse 4 with me. He says, I always thank God for you. Praise God, that is so wonderful. Hallelujah. I thank God a lot of times because his word is really speaking my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, because the word is in me. I praise God for that. I always thank God for you because of his grace given in Christ Jesus. Bless the Lord. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking, in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. This is why testimonies are so important to us, especially when they're completed. Hallelujah, because they edify, as you know, the church. Not only that, they inspire you to let you know that God has for you a powerful blessing, an anointing that you are to walk in, in the name of Jesus, because it is your anointing, and God is prepping you and preparing you to do so. So he says again, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed, confirmed, I say, in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gifts. I'm reminded of that all the time, and this is what I talk about. This is why the spirit, this season, is so important to us because it's to remind you that you are not lacking any spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts, as you know, is the fruit of the spirit, peace, love, joy. All of those things are pertaining to the spiritual gifts that you have. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even the spiritual wisdom, which comes with a host of seven spirits. We understand that too. But the key one is always to remember the spirit of all. When you're walking in the spirit of all, then that's the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. How many knew that? Because the spirit of the living God allows us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. We know these things. Glory to God. The fear of the Lord is for those, hallelujah, that love him, then he will show them 
his covenant. You hear me say these things, oh, but they're worth repeating, are they not? So again, because our testimony, praise the Lord, about Christ was confirmed in you. And we lack no spiritual gift then, as you are eagerly, as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to reveal them to you. And the only way they're going to be revealed is that you pray, ask God in the name of Jesus. The word tells us when we ask God in the name of Jesus, God is then glorified. Oh, Jesus, that is so powerful. God is, is then glorified when we ask, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. That's why he says, ask and you shall receive. Knock, then the door will be open. Seek, and then you are to find. See, notice these are spiritual gifts, hallelujah, that we need to be reminded of. Christ will reveal them. He will keep you strong. Look at that. Hallelujah. What have we been talking about? Be strong and what? Courageous. He says he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called, somebody say God's called me, pastor. God has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Praise the Lord. We could close the book right there and stop, and I think that would probably do it, but as you know, it gets better. Praise the Lord. God is always elevating us. Hallelujah. You've heard the term in the world says God is always, has always been leveling us up. Praise the Lord. So then I, I beseech you, brethren and sisters, that you do not become partakers of secretarianism. Because secretarianism is really sin because it's a narrow scope of life. It's a narrow scope. You become a bigot. You notice people that have a narrow scope of life, and we know some people like that. They can't broaden their horizons. They, they think one way, and that one way is detrimental to their lives, but they don't change. So we need to understand that we do not need to flow in the secretarianism. Hallelujah. We do not need to be a bigot. Hallelujah. And I always use that term, and I relate it to the spirit of Moloch a double-headed monster because you, you're, you're being tossed to and fro. You're, you're, you can't figure it out because you're, you're not allowing God to move. You're not flowing in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. You're, you're double-minded. That's what a monster is, one that's double-minded. And that's what the spirit of Moloch is. He has a, he's a two-headed monster. He's a two-headed creature. So if you're double-minded in anything, then you're flowing in something that you should not be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because then you're tossed to and fro. He's, he tells us this. So you shouldn't be that. So we know that. But sectarianism is like that. Because what? That's what the world teaches us. We have doubt. We have unbelief. And the world teaches us. It thrives on these things. We see that even if you watch politics. You, you'll see the jumping around in the politics of the world. We see that. What is that? Sectarianism. That is of the world. A lot of time, people are bigots. We see this. We we begin, and that is the world's way. But I tell you the truth, you're not of the world. Hallelujah. Though you're in the world, you're not of it. God has called you. Somebody say, God's called me pastor, so I'm not going to flow in the world's sectarianism. I'm not going to be a bigot. As we continue in Corinthians, then, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only way I can appeal to you, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no division among you when it comes to Christ Jesus. There will be no division among you that you may be perfectly united in mind and in thought. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A vision. We should have the same vision. You should have a vision. Perfect mind and thought. You know, one of the things that I pray for my wife and I, because it's the word, I pray, and I tell her this all the time, I pray that we submit ourselves one to another and the fear of the Lord. That's the only way we can do it, and the fear of the Lord. Remember, the spirit of awe, always reverencing God, walking in that fatherly love that he abodes on us. We know that God does this and gives us to us, but he wants us to always recognize him for being the all-loving father, the almighty God, 
the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, and everything in between and thereafter and before that, God is God. Praise the Lord. So then I appeal to you then, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another. In other words, we must agree in the ministry. In order for the ministry to grow the way it should, this is why we are not to forsake the assembly of God when you know that God is giving us a like mind. We are like spirit, like minded, one body of Christ. We begin to see and understand a lot of these things through the spirit of the living God. So then I continue to say that all of you are to agree with one another, agree with us that we are speaking the word of God. And if we're not, then you need to be looking the word of God up for yourself because your spirit man should line up with what we're pre preaching and teaching. It should tell us things. It should elevate us another level unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So then there, there should be no division among you that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Notice here that when we do that, we're able to what we've been teaching for the past year about praying for one another. If we're lined up in the spirit, our prayers, glory to God, will not go unanswered. They, the word then cannot, I say, cannot return unto the Lord void. All he's waiting for is us to flow in the spirit and to speak the word only. Hallelujah. Remember the centurion? I love that story about him. He told the Lord, God, if you would just speak the word only because I understand authority. Authority is when God speaks the word and you take hold of it and you flow with it by telling another the same word. And that word becomes the authority of life. Praise the Lord. So then a vision is what you should have. A lot of you need to understand that if you don't really have a vision, then take hold of our vision. And our vision has not changed Ever since the ministry was started, when this ministry was birthed, God gave us a vision. And that vision, dear ones, if in case you've forgotten, it's on the website if you want to go see it. But that vision is this, to inform and equip God's people and to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to spread the good news of God's wonderful plan. That's, that's our vision. That is also and should be your vision, because it's to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that we have, we have tried very hard to represent that. I believe God is speaking through our ministers, a hey God, oh glory, because they are speaking and preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're spreading God's wonderful plan. Our plan is simple, glory to God, is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. If we can equip you and inform you of this, then we're spreading the good news of God's wonderful plan. Our plan extends because God is not going to allow us, hallelujah, to rest on our laurels. He didn't allow it for the children of Israel. They could not stay in the same place. They had to go over the Jordan, somebody. They had to fight the good fight of faith because God, what? Gets the glory. We have to believe and trust Jesus and begin to ask only in his name, saints. Then God is going to multiply us, strengthen us, bless you in the process because you're part of something, a vision of God. Praise the Lord. So then we begin to see and understand the thing that God is trying to tell us. This conference is so important because it's our first one after this pandemic. The devil tried to stop us, but he could not. We band together and we pray through it. Go, oh, glory to God, the Holy Ghost. Because God is doing a mighty work in us. Therefore, he prepared us in that process. Oh, glory to God. It's kind of like a caterpillar that incubates and then becomes butterfly. God prepared us for these kinds of things. I believe God is doing a mighty, mighty work in you right now. And you're beginning to say, Pastor, you know, I'm ready to do a powerful thing for God. And God's saying to you that I'm going to do a powerful thing in you because you have committed to me. Hallelujah. And the spirit. Oh, I am glad, saints. I am so glad. I am glad I try very hard to teach correctly according to God. That's what I try to do. I do. I do. I pray a prayer every day. Every day that God makes me a loving, hallelujah, and compassionate person 
in the name of Jesus. A loving and caring and compassionate person in the name of Jesus. And I believe he has put that spirit on me because I get emotional a lot now. I'm, I'm, I'm almost like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. I'm, I'm, I'm telling and speaking God's word, and it's just all oh, causing me to be emotional. Hallelujah. I have to hold back a lot of times to tears. But I, my, my mission, I feel God's my mission is because I wasn't, and the old man, I wasn't like that. I, and I didn't like myself very much because I was not a man that cared about people. I was very hard. I ran a business. I was very shrewd. Shrewd is good when you're running a business. That's you must be that. You must you must not let folks take advantage of you. Otherwise, you won't have a business. You must be shrewd and tactful, but love, but yet loving and caring. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You don't need to be cursing and 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 being rude and ugly. You can be nice and kind and, and achieve much greater in the name of Jesus. Flow like God in the spirit. Glory to God, this is so good. So I'm glad I try very hard to teach correctly according to, to God's will, his word, his way. Glory to God. Your character then should be in the hope. Notice the depiction, the picture today. God of hope. Your character should be in the hope and in God's faithfulness. Have God not been faithful to you even though you have not been faithful to him? Oh, I repent and I work very hard, I pray you do the same saints of God because we're we're on our way somewhere someplace greater than we could ever imagine or thought because God's power is doing a mighty work in us he's leading and guiding and showing us the way so your character then should be in hope and and in, in the faithfulness of God first Corinthians in chapter 9 let's look at that because I want the word to speak for me today I don't want you to hear and see, but I want the word to penetrate your heart. Glory to God. And then penetrate your spirit. Glory to God. I'm speaking only to your spirit, man, today, saints. Therefore, I, therefore I want you to clearly hear what I'm saying. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says, it says this, verse 8, it says, Do I say these things as a mere man? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses for our sakes. Glory to God. The laws of Moses did not change, saints of God. We need to understand that. They've not changed. Jesus only came to enhance it. He added to it. And that is simply that we are to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our might, with all our strength, with all our mind, with all our soul. Glory to God. And that we are to love one another as Christ has loved us. And that's it. He added those things and that was it. But the still the law still remains the same. But how do we how do we escape the law? The law is it's the escape the law is simple. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit trunks, trunks the law. Glory to God. It's the trunk card. When you play all oh, glory, when you play the fruit of the spirit, you have trunk. The law, because you're walking what? In the spirit of the living God. You're walking what? In the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You're walking in the mighty name of Jesus. This what trumps the law. The love of God. Hallelujah. Trumps the law. So then I say to you, I say to you, for it is written that the law of Moses for our sake, no doubt this is written, that he who plows should plow in what? Hope. My God. And he who thrashes or separates himself from the world in hope shall be the partaker, the partaker of hope. There is right there, God of hope. That's what we should be in. We should be walking in that faith. Hallelujah requires us to walk in this hope. Glory to God for this wonderful hope of God, because faith is what the substance of all things hope for and the evidence of things not seen. Every night you should go to bed hoping, glory to God, that you wake up in a better way. Oh, glory to God for the next day. Glory to God. You should hope that you be a better person the next day than you were the day before. Hope the Lord is. So then this hope then, we must flow in this in order to receive God and the fruit of the Spirit. 
for those whose life is somewhat off or not quite right, you know, I hear you, you know, I, I say all the time, I says, you know, you, you're feeling some kind of way. Sometimes we can't put our finger on how we're feeling it. It's an emotion that that's hard to label sometimes. But I tell you the truth, when you praise and worship God, he will remove whatever it is, whatever that emotion is. Because sometimes if you allow that emotion to fester, the enemy moves in. And he moves in with strong holds like oppression and depression, oppression, all that kind of stuff. He moves in with that if you don't change your atmosphere, if you don't change your way of thinking, if you don't change your attitude. For those then whose life is somewhat off and not quite right, let me talk to you. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The message then is clear. The message, I tell you the truth, is clear. For the message of the cross, watch this, the message of the cross, the cross of whom Jesus, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing. My people, what? Perish for a lack of knowledge. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't take hold of Jesus, you are, you are destined for failure. You are destined to fall. You will perish, basically, because the word speaks to all of us. So for the message of the cross, then, is foolish to those who are perishing, who those who don't accept it. But to us, I say me, Pastor, but for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Notice, we're being saved, saints. Yes, we were saved, but you know, saved is a work in progress, isn't it? It's always seeking God for no, more knowledge, more revelation, more power, hallelujah, more walking in the righteousness of God, the goodness of God. It's the what? It's the good fight of faith. So it's a continued process. Oh, saints of God, we should always be a work in progress because if the Bible tells us, even in Deuteronomy, says you should, oh, glory to God, tie a ribbon around, around your finger, put the word on your dope post, write it on your forehead. Because you'll walk out and forget the word of God. Hallelujah. So then God is always wanting you to be saved. It's the power of God. For it is written, I tell you the truth, I will destroy, notice, watch this, watch this. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. In other words, he will destroy the wisdom of the world. The intelligence of the intelligence, the intelligence of the world. I will frustrate. Notice he said I will frustrate him. Where is the wise man? They will ask. Where is the scholar? They will ask. Where is the philosopher of this age, of this world, of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Notice the wisdom of the world. God says, I make foolish. And when you watch it sometimes, you, when you watch the media and all that stuff, you realize it's just foolishness. It, it, it don't make sense only to people Notice how the rich people do everything under the sun that you know and I know that is illegal. And they're doing stuff. The wicked, I say to you, the wicked is doing stuff and they're all happy and it looks like they're really making it. And you see it all the time, even in the churches, the political realm, all of that stuff, the world itself. Hallelujah. You see this. They're flowing on their own wisdom. And God says, where is this? He says, where this is, God says, he will make it foolish. He says, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And you see how crazy it is, isn't it? Ever notice, notice how the wisdom of the world works. And you know this because you've experienced it in your life. Let me give you an example. If you notice, you know, it, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Sometimes saints of God, and you know this, a lot of us get all the rules while others get all the money. If you were to notice that we have more rules and regulations to keep us down, but why the wicked is being enriched with monies that they print and we get all the rules as to tell us why we can't have it. And we must go through all these loops and hoops to get it. And if you can't read, then guess what? You get nothing. If, you, if they put it in a book and they, they, they underline it so, put it in, oh, watch this, 
they put it in the fine print. And how many of you really read the fine print? That's designed. It's designed to keep you from reading the knowledge that you need to deal in the world. But God, that's why God says the wisdom of man is foolish because he cares nothing about no one except himself. That's why the Bible tells us that we are to trust no man. See, but watch this, what the word, this is the word. You need this. This is 1 Corinthians, hallelujah, chapter 1, verse 19. Let's look at that. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, he says, the intelligence of the intelligence. I will frustrate it, said the Lord. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And you see, I just explained how crazy it is, how it's so lopsided about a lot of things. For since with sense, for sense in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. Notice, God's wisdom requires us in the spirit to know him. They did not, they, they would not recognize Jesus. And the only reason God sent Jesus was because they were not recognizing him as the true and only God. Because as you remember in the old days, how they, Oh, how they worship idols, lots of idols. You know, we know Baal and Asher and all those other things that they created, necromancers, all that stuff. You know, soothsayer, all that stuff was back then. And they would not recognize the true God. They went astray. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the God being the loving father that he is and was even then brought his son with love. So God then has has he not, oh, glory to God, made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in this wisdom, God, the world through its wisdom did not know Jesus. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Notice, he confound the wisdom of the world because they gave them, if you remember, he even gave them a reprobate mind. Come on, somebody because they were all into their own wisdom and their own foolishness. But through Jesus Christ, he says, he's pleased that the foolishness of what was preached saved those who believe. Because Jesus preached nothing but the goodness of Christ, nothing but the good news, as I mentioned. That's all he does. That's why we are to be partakers of the spirit of the living God. This is why this is so important, saints of God, because God is just trying to tell us. The Jews, the Jews in the same chapter, verse 22, the Jews demanded miraculous signs. That, and that's all they did. They, they wanted to see miraculous signs. And the funny thing about that, God continued to give them signs all the time. Even Gideon tells us about all those signs. And then even Samson, there was plenty of signs. Even the, the, even the prophet, the prophets, they showed plenty of signs. So we see there was always, Moses gave us plenty of signs. So, but yet the Jews then demanded miraculous signs. That's why we, we, we taught on miracles and signs, because you need to recognize that the signs and miracles are already here. You already are, have received a lot of them, and God is revealing so many more. But you can't see it until you flow in the spirit of the living God. So the Jews, he says, demanded miraculous signs, and the Greek looked for wisdom. Notice, they're looking for the wrong thing, but nobody was looking to Jesus. Nobody was looking to God. But we preach Christ's crucifixion, a stumbling block, a stumbling block, because the Jews refused to accept Christ. So then it became a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles, because they could not receive our Lord and Savior. But those whom God has called, oh, somebody, thank you, Holy Ghost. Those whom God has called, Jews and Greeks, hallelujah, hallelujah, be called Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. See that, saints? The foolishness even of God is wiser than man's wisdom. This is why I say your thoughts are not my thoughts. Well, your ways are not his ways. Because he says the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And the weakness of God 
is stronger than man's strength. Because God speaks to us, saints, in the spirit, in the spirit realm. This is where you get true knowledge. This is why, because the word, the word, the word shows us we can have God's wisdom. He makes it available. He says, if you lack it, ask and he'll give it to you liberally. He'll give it to you. But if you out here seeking the world's wisdom, then guess what? You're going to fall. Hallelujah. Because we see how foolishness it is. If you turn on the TV, how can you tell me even when you watch, oh, somebody, come on now. Even when you watch movies that you think are going to be okay, and at the end of the day, evil, evil trumps everything. How can that be when you know that good always trumps evil? But in the world, evil, they have evil. They, they display it in every way. The lying spirits, hallelujah, you know what I'm talking about. Those people that want to be something that they're not, come on, hallelujah. You see how crazy that is. I don't got to go into detail, but you know how crazy that is. The lying spirit, hallelujah. When an individual, hallelujah, that's a female, wants to be a male. Or, oh, glory to God. I don't want to go there. But you know what I'm talking about. But nevertheless, let's continue. Because that's the world's wisdom. It makes no sense to most sane individuals, especially believers in Christ. See, let me tell you something. Spiritual wisdom, then, is of God. That's the only way it can be. Spiritual wisdom, I tell you the truth, comes with discernment. It's, in other words, when you can see the evil one from far away and then be able to rebuke him, tell him to get behind you in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, and take authority and power over him. Cause him to be under your feet. We know that's the evil one. That's the devil. And you have all of these things that you can rebuke him, bind him, curse him, cast him down to the bottom of the veil. You have the power, saints, through the spirit of the living God, through discernment. So then this is 1 Corinthians, again, chapter 2. Paul was very busy. He says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come with eloquence. He did not come with eloquence. See, a lot of you remember Moses. He he, Moses was all into the fact that he couldn't speak. He always had excuses. And Pastor Darlene preached on no more excuses. It's out there on the web, too, by the way. It's on our, on our YouTube. And you need to hear it. You need to listen to it. Because no more excuses. Say, God, if, oh, Jesus Christ. If God has called you, you do not have excuses. God called Moses. Moses had excuses. But when he left, oh, when he left, oh, the presence of the Lord. He was in power. He was in power with a staff and a rod that we know even today is used in our prayers. For thy rod and thy staff, oh, hallelujah, will keep thee and bless thee. Oh, hallelujah, comfort thee and be with thee. Notice that same rod and staff spiritually is with you today. Praise the Lord. So then we must ask God for spiritual wisdom and discernment. He says, he says, so here's Paul says, he's telling the people as he's ministering, hallelujah, even as we do, we don't always be eloquent. We, we make mistakes. You've seen a lot of the fact that we've had technical issues. We've, mis, we've, we've mispronounced words. Oh, glory to God. It doesn't matter, saints. What you should be keying on is the word of the Lord. You shouldn't be looking to the left or to the right or looking to see how we make mistakes or whether we're crying or weeping or Whatever it is, you should be looking to God and asking God, God, what is this profiting me? How can I be a better person from the word that was just preached to me? Hallelujah. Because saints of God, if you remember, we're just vessels. We're no better than you are. We're just vessels that have asked God to use us. We made that commitment many years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when we may or may not want to do it, God says, no, this, I've called you to do this. Then we accepted it. So we're no different than you. God has no respect for persons, but he wants us to grab hold of his spiritual wisdom and discernment today. So then I say to you that even though we're not eloquent or, or superior wisdom or, or whatever it is, as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. That's all we can do. When we proclaim the testimony of God, the living God, the spirit of God moves on us to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I pray that this word is, is penetrating the heart of man and woman this morning. For I have resolved to know nothing why I was old. Why I was old. I have resolved to know nothing why I was, but with the acceptance of Christ Jesus and his crucifixion. See, this is why when you're saying, when we're saved, when we recognize Jesus and say, the Lord died for me, hallelujah, and rose again on the third day, I became saved. To, to the world, that's 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 crazy, isn't it? To, to, to the to the antichrist people or to the heathens or to the atheists, that's crazy, isn't it? Their wisdom doesn't equate to, to that knowledge. Oh, glory to God, to that power in his crucifixion. Recognizing that, that's what being saved is. When you have recognized God and accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now you're flowing in spiritual wisdom. Then God can pour into you discernment and knowledge and understanding. All of these things that he has, the fruit of the Spirit, so I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. That's the only thing really that we talk about. The whole Bible is about Jesus. In the beginning, God knew he was going to bring Jesus. Jesus was in the beginning. He was the tree. Hallelujah. Of life. That was Jesus, the tree of life. Then as we go on, we see that then the law, he was in the law. Hallelujah. He was in Genesis. We see that. And then all of a sudden, he's now he's in the prophets. Hallelujah. Now he's in the judges. Hallelujah. Now he's in the New Testament and being witnessed about all the time. It's all about Jesus Christ. It is the true spiritual wisdom of God. And if we want to get to know him, we need to ask. For I resolve, I tell you the truth, to know nothing why I was with you except with Jesus Christ in his crucifixion. I came to you in weakness and fear. I, when I say I, this time, I'm talking about me. I used to stumble so much as a young minister. My wife will tell you, I hated it. I hated it when I stumbled. I hated it when I sound, I didn't sound really decent. I didn't sound like I knew what I was talking about. But I went back to the Lord and he began to preach to me. He began to say, humble, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And as I began to do that, hallelujah, as I began to seek him for myself, as I began to spend time with him, my words changed. Then I began to only speak his word because his word is the one that make, made it a difference in my life. So he says, I came to you in weakness and fear, and with much trembling, oh, somebody, how many have ever been in the presence of God and been trembling? My message then and my preaching were not with wise, was, was, was not with wise and persuasive words. Never did I have that, but here's what I did have. The trembling, the trembling I had, my message was not with the, with the preaching with wise and persuasive words, with a demonstration, with a demonstration, saints of God, with the spirit of power. The demonstration of the spirit of the living God, because that's where all the power comes from. That's the demonstration of the spirit of God. Just broke a yoke. Just broke a yoke. So that your faith, your faith, not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. We understand that only way we can receive that power is through Christ. The only way we can receive Christ is by being saved and accepting the fact that he died for us. That's part of the crucifixion. Knowing even why he was living and walked around on the earth, there he is, that is, as a human, he was doing what? Nothing but miracles, signs and wonders, nothing but healings. All of these things that right now we have in our possession because Christ gave them to us before he left us. He even given us the keys over the enemy. All of the authority, all of the power we now have. These are the things we have. The world cannot understand that. This is why things work out for you when no one else understands it. No one else can believe that these things happen. We've given you testimonies of things that happen. And the only way for you to know that it is true is through the spirit of the living God revealing the truth. Praise the Lord, saints. Glory to God. Well, I leave you with this. Joel chapter 2, very familiar 
It's the, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is simple. This in Job chapter two, it talks about all these wonderful blessings, all these wonderful signs, wonders, and miracles. We know Job, hallelujah. So it talks about the day of God, the day of the Lord. Somebody say, The day of the Lord is with me. And afterwards, he says, I will pour out my spirit, glory to God, on you, on all people that know me through my son. Your sons and daughters, then, because they know you and you praying for them, and you're standing in the gap for them, you're teaching them about Christ Jesus. So then your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see visions. What did I say about visions? If you don't and you can't see it, you, then you need to grab hold of a vision, even our vision, and pray, because all it talks about is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So then your young men will all will, will see visions, young men. For for even on my servants, both men and women, that would be us, saints of God, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Oh, glory to God, this is so good. He said, I will pour out my spirit in these days, these coming days. God is, is, is equipping us with power of his spirit. He says, it. he says, even on my servants, which is who? You and me, your servants, both man and what woman. He says, I will pour out then my spirit in those days. I will show wonders, wonders. Notice what he's doing here. He's even revelating to us about it. He said, I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth. How the world will not understand, cannot comprehend. Notice just like darkness could not comprehend the light. Darkness, I say, of the world cannot comprehend the light of Jesus. He says, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, everyone, somebody say me, Pastor, everyone who is called, see, you're, if you're called, you're flowing in the Spirit of God. And he says, everyone who is called on the name, hallelujah, everyone who calls then on the name even, on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing. He says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. And what is our minister about? Deliverance. God is speaking to us, saints. Hallelujah. Pastor Darlene defined our ministry years ago as the deliverance ministry because God had put that in her even before we married. That she was walking in a deliverance ministry that came from her ancestors. It came from the Holy Spirit. And then when she met me, we were able to birth it through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So now we're flowing in deliverance ministry. That's why we can pray over you as prophets and teachers, pastors, evangelists, apostles. Glory to God. The fivefold ministry, we were taught in it. We were trained in it by a fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord has called. See, you're going to survive. What we always say, what we always say, Stephen say, oh, we shall, we shall not die, but live because we're called in the name of the Lord. We, we shall live and declare the good works of God, the, the, the works, the wonderful works. Glory to God. All of his wonderful things. We are called by his name. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, saints, for your ear. I thank you for allowing us to be part of your life and to share with you the spirit of the living God. So we call ourselves, what? Blessed, highly favored among men and women. But notice, because we have the favor and a good understanding of the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. That's all I have for you today.